Hello, I'm Jack Koenig with Graco Industrial Lubrication Equipment, and today I'm gonna to show you how to replace the motor inside of a G3 pump. This video will also apply to G1 and electric grease jockey pumps, but honestly, most of the time that this process is done, it will be to a G3 Max, because as the most expensive in the G3 family, that's where people are most likely to go through the effort of actually replacing the motor in one of these units. In a G3 standard pump such as this one, people aren't typically gonna spend the time because they're fairly inexpensive. So let's get a closer look now and see how this is done. The first step in this process is gonna actually just be to remove the reservoir, but you can see I've already done this. There's a whole separate video I did on reservoir replacement, so just for the sake of time, if you need to reference that, there's a separate video that you can find on YouTube or on our SalesBook app. So let's go ahead and remove the wiper arm, which is reverse thread, so it spins off clockwise. Set that somewhere clean. Next, we need two good-sized flathead screwdrivers to get the ricer plate off. Before we do that, though, actually, Let's pull this O-ring out because we don't want to lose it. And so I just want this O-ring somewhere clean. And now I can work on the ricer plate. Now that came off really easily because this is my second take. Normally, it you'll have to fight with it. It took me a few minutes to get it off the first time. And the key is to get your screwdrivers 180 degrees apart. And a lot of times they'll be opposing like this so that then as you press down, it pries up kind of like what a gear puller would do where you get the equal pull on each side. So now we can see the three screws that hold the motor onto the base. What we're gonna wanna do is remove this pump element as well because there's a little bit of an interference here where you might be able to squeeze past that, but the spring could also end up putting the screw in crooked and you don't wanna strip the threads or cross thread this thing when you put it back together. So let's go ahead and remove the pump element. This is a one and one eighth inch across the hex on the pump element and If you don't have that exact wrench, you can always just use a crescent wrench. These come out pretty easily because even if it's seized a little bit, you're not gonna have it corroded together when you have a steel male thread going into a nylon female thread. From here, we lift out the cam, and then there's this plastic washer, but it can't come out yet because there's a key here. So. How do we get that key out? The best thing is with a big pair of side cutters. When it works, this is the best way to do it. So we just wanna get it slid. Here, let me go this angle. So we just wanna slide it down so that it's nice and parallel with the key right up against the shaft. And then grip it and pry it right out. So that wasn't too hard. If it doesn't want to come out, you may need to get a chisel, like a small chisel and a hammer and chisel it out. But try to be gentle when you're doing that just so that you don't damage any of the plastic here. Even though this fiberglass reinforced nylon is pretty tough, it's not indestructible. So just be careful with the hammer and chisel. Now we'll get our flathead back in here again. Pry this out. This piece is called the bearing washer or the washer bearing. It's just a piece of plastic that the cam rides on. So now before I loosen these screws, I wanna work on the bottom. So let's just flip this over here. The next tool we need is a T20 Torx bit, and I'm gonna just do this with my driver to save time. Now that those are all loose, we just get our flat head again and pry this off and make sure all nine screws stay with it because later when we put this back together, we wanna to maintain that ingress protection of IP69K and it needs all the screws for that. The next step is to just disconnect some wires from this motor. So first we have this connector on the motor. That just pulls straight out. Pull that to the side. 
You may want to remove more of these connectors just to get them out of the way for when we drop the motor, but sometimes it's okay just to leave them in. Just be careful not to break any other connectors so that you have to do more repairs later. And now we need a Phillips head screwdriver because these three ground wires all come together here. And I want to make sure I don't lose that screw, so I'm going to take it out, set it aside. All right, now we're ready to drop this motor. Before that, let's take a quick look over here at the G3 standard unit. This is a lot simpler. All you're gonna have to do is pull this connector out and that's the only wiring. There is no other grounding going on in here. So it'd be really simple. Now we need a Torx T30 bit. And there's our motor. One thing I want to point out on these motors is that you can see we're working on an AC unit, but the motor is 24 volts DC. That's because all of the AC units include the AC to DC adapter inside. So really the internals, the circuit board, the motor, everything are all 24 volt inside of an AC unit. So that's why when you order a proximity switch or a pressure switch, you're looking for a DC one when it's used with the G3 Max. And it's also why the motor is only going to be 24 volt or 12 volt. 12 volts pretty straightforward. You need the 12 volt motor. 24 volt pumps obviously need a 24 volt motor too. But if you're doing work on an AC unit, you also need a 24 volt motor. So now we can just put this back in. Because the motor actually sits down in this pocket, there's really only one way it's going to go in. Just set it in there and support it with your hand. And then we'll get one of these screws in. Maybe not lined up right. There we go. So now that's lined up. One thing to note on these screws too is that there is an O-ring that sits underneath this washer that sort of captures the o-ring so that's going to seal the grease because this is the bottom of the reservoir make sure that that's on there when you put this back together and that when you're screwing this in you're not tearing up that o-ring because you don't want grease or oil leaking down into the base where the electronics are all right now now that that's all snugged up we want to get out our torque wrench we're going to torque this to 75 inch pounds Sort of awkward trying to get a hex bit into a torque wrench, but it can be done. Now we're going to flip back over to the bottom, put all this back together. Okay, with my screwdriver I was able to guide that back into the hole. That's tight, so now we can push our power cable back onto the motor. Make sure you don't forget that or it's not gonna work. And then we just wanna kinda tuck these wires places where they're not gonna get pinched. And now the bottom cover can go back on. And now it's time to go back to our torque wrench, but these only need 30 inch pounds. So there, we're gonna turn the torque wrench way down and now I'll torque these guys too. And this torquing is an important step because these ones, again, are what maintain the ingress protection so that these things keep the water out. Now, one note about using a driver at this step, a driver can strip these screws out. So when you're screwing into these nylon bases, be real careful with the driver because then when you go with your torque wrench, you'll see that it's just spinning because you stripped it out. That obviously is not good. So you may want to even just skip the driver on the reassembly and just use a traditional screwdriver or a ratchet of some sort with your key. So now we can put the rest of the top back together. That washer bearing goes on first. Put the key back in. There, with a couple of pliers, I was able to get the key in. 
now when we put this cam back in, this silver ring is the wear ring that the pump rides on and that goes down. So make sure that you orient it so that the ring is down. And then from there, we're gonna put the ricer plate back in and there's another O-ring on the bottom of the ricer plate. Just double check, make sure that that's still there. And then these two holes are what you're gonna to wanna to look for because they line up with the low level sensors, which are back here. And at this point, we can just throw a rag on top and take a rubber mallet. Pound that down. Make sure our O-ring on top goes back in as well. And then we spin our wiper arm back on counterclockwise because again, it's a reverse thread. Now the only thing left to do is reinstall the pump element and reattach the reservoir. So as you can see, it's not rocket science. It's a little bit tricky to do some of these things, especially because removing the reservoir can be the hardest part of this whole process, but it's definitely something that you can do. So hopefully you found this informative and helpful. If you have any questions about G3 pumps or any other Graco pump, please feel free to contact us. We are always happy to hear from you.